and we are so pleased to bring on our next guest. Um, uh, we have Dr. Kim Bloomer, uh, and she is an animal naturopath, as well as uh, she's also certified in small animal nutrition. Uh, years of experience in canine wellness. Dr. Kim is a published author, a writer, a blogger, uh, host of Doggone Truth podcast, uh, and also a uh, canine wellness program, Doggone Wellness. Dr. Kim, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for being here. Oh, wow. Thank you for having me. Can you guys hear me? We can. We can. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I love that I got in on the bird guy. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, they're, they're impressive creatures, aren't they? I mean, even oh. more impressive in person. The wingspan is unbelievable. I would love to have seen that. I like the predator birds anyway, so that was I like the predators. So <laughs> that was awesome. I'm glad I got to be here for that. Well, we're glad you're here uh, for your topic, um, and and I know we are running a little bit behind, so I'm going to let you jump right into it. Uh, okay. Uh, and this is your pet's health uh, with Dr. Kim Bloomer. Um, and, uh, and, and we can't wait, maybe we'll have a little time afterwards for a quick Q and a, but, uh, okay. we, you know, the, the platform is yours now. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for allowing me the privilege. All right. So my topic is always going to be on natural health for pets. And I got to just do a little disclaimer here to start off that, and you know, this is this. This is this what we have to do. So I'm not a veterinarian, um, holistic or otherwise. Like he said, I am a um, animal nature path. So here's the difference. Just so you know, I don't prescribe, diagnose, or treat. That is the job of a licensed veterinarian. What I do is I promote and build health. And I am here to empower the pet owner to help their pets be well naturally, proactively, and so that that your chances of needing to have all of the veterinary care are minimal. That's not to undermine what their role is. So just got to say that. So also I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm just here to share my, you know, experience, my personal research and application years of doing this, working with animals in a variety of settings over the years. What my goal is always is to share about mindset more than anything okay albert schweitzer and you can look him up he was a very well known man he said the greatest discovery of any generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering the attitudes of their minds by the way this can determine our health or dis-ease in the body um or in any you know our mind our mind our emotions and in our pets because in fact, with some of my colleagues, we've come to the conclusion that much of what's wrong with our pets is us. Now, I'm going to focus on the dog, but keep in mind that the principles that I share are applicable to any animal. That's why I really love the bird man. What he was saying was so important for us to know and understand and embrace. Richard Schultz said, there are no incurable diseases. If you're willing to take responsibility, there's the operative word for yourself and your life. You can heal yourself of anything. Your body, and I would add our animals, has the ability to heal itself completely of any disease. Here's the thing, and, and, I'm, and, and during such a time as this that we're in, we're in this, we're paralyzed by fear. And that's what immobilizes us in our minds. And then it creates a dependency on something without us thinking through things. And getting responsible. When I work with people, my whole goal is to help point them to where they're going to make the decisions, regardless of the information, like what I share with you today. It's up to you to make that decision if you're going to receive it or not for you, and to use for your pets or not. So for me, faith is what propels us forward. Faith in the, in the laws of health that I'm going to talk about and in what we have been provided in nature for our wellness. Um, we have a book out on uh, a naturopathic approach for essential oils for animals. And I'm just going to uh, read a little section of this here so I can kind of set the, the, the premise for today's topic. But holistic health is not intended to serve as a Band-Aid or a one-time fix to a symptom, which is what we often think of as disease. It is an ongoing lifestyle, a journey. Ultimately, it means living better and being healthier, both physically and mentally. 
emotionally. So this kind of health, this holistic naturopathic health is based on the principles that the body has the inherent ability to heal itself. And every illness has a cause, whether it manifests at the physical, mental, or emotional level, and symptoms are expressions of the body's attempt to heal. Symptoms are not the cause of illness. Let's say, let me just say that again. They are not the cause of illness, but if they're allowed to continue long enough, they may trigger other conditions in the body that you will find yourself allegorically chasing your tail, much as your dog might. So the emphasis for me and what I always teach is on using the laws of nature to build health and thereby hopefully our, our goal is to prevent illness. All right, so here's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna pull back the curtain on the fake little wizard, just as our little friend Toto did, and leave it to a dog to reveal the truth to us because that's exactly what happened with me. And it's why I'm able to be here speaking with you today on this subject. I like to share stories, and so I'm gonna go to those stories. And there's a Hasidic proverb that I've used a lot, and it says, give people a fact or an idea and you can enlighten their minds. Tell them a story and you touch their souls. I would say touch their spirits because our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. So I had this uh, golden retriever when I was a vet tech back in the 80s, and I was given to him by a client. He was given to me, I'm sorry, by a client. His name was Fridge. He was named after Refrigerator Perry of the uh, Chicago Bears football team because he was the largest puppy in the litter. And that football team was the big team at the time. And he's the one who kind of cracked the door open for me. He started having a lot of things that we often mistake as seasonal or normal. What they are not is normal. They're common. And they're the body's alert system telling us things are out of balance. And the body always is working hard to stay in balance, but it needs the right support to do that. So he started having all these things I'm about to mention. He had hot spots and rashes, and he had chronically something wrong with ears all the time. And I just attributed it to a breed thing. It's not a breed thing. <laughs> we get told that, but it's not. Um, you know, for example, teeth covered in tartar, so we need to brush the teeth, we're told, and we need to go. Um, get a dental done. So, and having bad breath that could stop an elephant in its tracks. None of those are signs of good health. They're not normal, but they are common. So, I just want to sidetrack for just a second. We're going to, this is the, the primary emphasis for today is what is health? Kind of like that question, what is truth? <laughs> Chris Tigran said simple solutions are always considered irrelevant and inconsequential even when they are true. Now, these are called laws of health. I go with eight of them. You'll see sometimes six because we leave off a couple of important ones often because it's just easier for people to remember. But they are quite simply nutrition, exercise, pure and fresh water, sunshine. Yeah, all the things we're told that are scary and, scary and we need to avoid nowadays. Um, temperance, which is an old word for moderation, fresh air, and good rest, and trust in those laws. And for me, I trust in God because he gave us those laws in nature. So the nutrition is the foundation of good health for all species. And if you listen to the Birdman, you probably heard what he was saying in there, what some of the things he was saying. And it's exactly what I want to focus on. So did you guys know? That pet food is number one, processed denatured food. Remember what we're told for ourselves about processed food? Okay. Two, nothing is balanced and complete in every single serving. That's not possible for us when we're eating our own nutritional foods, and it's not possible for them. It's balanced over time. And three, there is um, hype that contributes to ill health. There's a lot of things that contribute to it, and it starts here. Some of the ingredients in pet food, and I'm talking any, I don't care what labels on it. The labels don't matter because they're all processed in the same fashion. Some, there's a couple that I would be okay with freeze dried, that kind of thing. Um, but this is going to sound really gross and you guys may have heard some of this, but they're genetically modified. There's byproducts. Originally the pet food industry was started as a way to get rid of the 
stuff we throw away from the human food industry and rather than get rid of it or have to pay someone to haul it off, we created the pet food industry. It was a way to, to make money off of it rather than to have to pay someone to haul it off. So there's pine trees, there's feathers, there's bugs like beetles and flies in the maggots, yep, MSG and pesticides on and on and on. And again, grains and all of that refuse from the human food industry. And on my podcast, I have a history of pets in America where the um, guest I had on there, she talked a lot about this because she's a historian and a museum curator. So it was her passion. I'm quoting from the FDA's magazine of 2008. And it says, quote, dogs and cats often eat food processing and packaging chemicals that contaminate their food day after day and year after year, resulting in cumulative exposures with unknown health risks. Yeah. But people will tell me all the time, I get that, but it's just easier. It's more convenient. And I always say convenient for who? For us, I've learned, I've been um, feeding my dogs a natural raw diet for, um, let me think, it's been over 15 years now. And it's just convenient for us. We've built relationships to be able to provide for our dogs. And, I, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a bit. They'll say to me, but my dog likes X, Y, and Z. Yep, they also like chocolate and that can kill them. Mm -hmm. Theobromine in it, in the chocolate is what can kill them. Unlike, well, it could us too if we eat too much of it. So the solution is simple, species appropriate and raw. And contrary to a lot of popular opinions, not based on anatomy and physiology, I might add, it's based on what we're trained to believe is the truth, is that dogs are carnivores. Will they eat things that aren't carnivorous? Yes. Any animal will because they're all opportunistic and they all want to survive. So they will eat whatever they have to. Dogs are just as obligate as cats as carnivores. And I'll stand firm on that. So the main benefit of feeding a raw diet to your dog is health. <laughs> but um, a lot of people will say, well, I can't afford it. And you know what? I get that. I mean, that was actually my first response when I started really digging into this. Um, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could mix it in. I could do this and that. And yeah, my, my Neapolitan Mastiff, who's the reason I actually got into natural health, to be honest with you, is um, he would pick out everything but the meat that I would mix in with the kibble, by the way. He would throw it all in, and, and they're messy eaters anyway, so it was nasty. And after, it took me a while, I was slow in trying to grasp that concept with him. Okay, so another thing is what I found is by connecting with people that help that are of the same mind, there's co-ops, there's, we work with farmers, we work with butchers, we work with all of them that want to give us the things that humans don't want and feed that to our dogs. So some people have told me, and I have a, a client, her name is Jamie, she's an awesome entertainer. Um, she's a dancer, she does that kind of aerial dancing and has a, a company and, up in Canada. And they'll say, well, I'm vegan or vegetarian. And she said this, and I'm just gonna use her quote, my cats are like jungle cats now that they are on raw. It grosses me out big time as I haven't touched meat in almost 20 years, but they love it. And their litter box doesn't smell anymore. Crazy. <laughs> so that's why I created the, the, the course that I did. It's the, what, what, um, Ethan, what you mentioned was the, um, uh, dog on wellness and I call it dog on cause we just want to get to the dog on truth about this stuff. Right. So some of the other things, and this could be a whole topic in itself is just getting to this whole, you know, raw feeding and everything. And I think a lot more people know about it now. So I'm happy about that. But there are some of the other things that contribute to their ill health and toxins, toxins, toxins. We're, we're loaded with them. Cleaning products, air fresheners, yard products, personal care products, pet shampoos and conditioners, fluoride and chlorine. We could go on and on and on and on. There's a whole lot of that. I, I'm going to talk about my dog Shadrach. But let me just mention, I'll, I'll mention, I'll go back to fridge in a little bit, but my dog Shadrach, Neapolitan Mastiff, the one that made the mess with all his food, he's the reason why I'm an animal nature path, why I started podcasting and blogging and doing all this stuff. He's the reason. 
because he came to me at about four and a half months old, came out of a bad background. Um, I think he was, um, from what I know, he was being raised with um, drug dealers. So he was abused. He was, um, he looked so emaciated when I got him. I thought this poor dog. And I got him at a really bad time in my life, just a, a tragic loss in our family. And right at Christmas, I mean, could you guys think of three? It was all at the same time. And I thought, oh, but he's not at all like a golden retriever, which is what I had had. Completely different breed dog. And he was a mess. And I had never had a mess like this before. And when I got him, I just thought after getting a good dressing down from one of my friends who's a vet tech and, and telling me this dog deserves to have the best. You need to run with this and just get over yourself and handle it. And I went, you're right. I do. He is a beautiful dog. And in the process, I started um, really, um, I focused, I, I just, I just, I don't know what it was, but I bonded with him. We just started growing. And about the time he was, I don't know, a couple years old, he started having all kinds of allergies. Now, remember what I mentioned earlier, allergies to this and to that. And I started trying all different kinds of dog food. I tried everything. We were going to the vet for anal sac issues. And if you've ever had to deal with that, it's gross, stinky. And, um, and then it just different things and, the, and always on medication. Well, until one time when he started having these weird patches of skin uh, on his skin, on either side, they were going bald. And I thought, wow, his, he had looked so good for so long. What's going on here? Well, we went to the vet, he put him on antibiotics and he had an allergic reaction to those, ended up in emergency care, sicker. They gave him more antibiotics and I was really angry by now. I said, this poor dog has suffered so much at the hands of people. And now this, and it was because I didn't make, I wanted to go back to what I learned as a vet tech instead of digging in because I had already started looking into alternative and natural health, knowing. For myself and there's got to be a better way for them and in the process we figured out what was wrong with our dog our vet was great he was a great guy but that was what he knew to do that's what they're trained to do and in the process we my husband figured out well he's only it's weird the vet could find nothing under the slides nothing but we prescribe because that's what we're that's all we know to do right what happened was we i had painted and the paint was toxic and he was leaning against the paint. We stopped letting him lean against the paint. I went on a search, found an amazing skincare product for him that was sent to me free by this guy um, in Young Living. And then here I am, you know, all, that, that's what got me started. And because of Shadrach, I went all the way. I went back to school. I had to learn. I had to know for his sake to help him. And he lived to be um, almost 12, even in spite of his poor beginnings. And it was, he was raised completely naturally from that time forward. Um, got him on raw diet. He was in chiropractic. I did weekly massages on him. I used essential oils on him. And that's what turned him around. I started looking into these things. Hey, if this is helping him, what about me? So we started, because of my golden retriever fridge, who was having petite mal seizures, we stopped. We noticed that they would trigger every time we would use a pesticide in the house or in the yard. We quit, we went organic with him. So we'd already done that. But then I started looking at the cleaning products and went, man, we need to, we need to think about what we're using in our homes, mm -hmm. especially now so many people are using some really toxic stuff that isn't gonna help us be well -er or our animals. It's gonna, it's very detrimental to our health. And air fresheners, I was a big one on that. I make my own now and I make them with good ingredients. <laughs> water, <laughs> purified water, and the, and, I, and the essential oils I use. Personal care products that are on us, but everything off gases in our home. So I could go again on and on and on. And I know there's other people coming here. So I want to cut to this chase. A lot of things that we've been taught are good for their health and their safety because isn't. Safety is an illusion. And that includes pesticides, medications, and a lot of other things, microchips, and I could say a whole lot more about a lot of this. D 
Daniel J. Burstein said, the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance, it's the illusion of knowledge. So that's a form of, that's a form of knowledge. A friend of mine, she's a veterinarian, naturopathic veterinarian, and she said, it's important to see how the use of antibiotics in veterinary medicine is responsible for arthritic and neuropathy symptoms and pain. The companies flood, these pharmaceutical companies flood the animal health market with drugs that have been found unsuccessful for human use detrimental in other words. So in order to not take a loss, they put those into the pet health. Antibiotics destroy the gut flora, steroids destroy the liver, NSAIDs do the same. I ask you guys this question, how is any of this healing or proactive or preventative? Medications also upset the natural acid alkaline balance in the bodies to be well. They mask and suppress, but they do not, cannot heal. So I'm going to use my dog Shadrach again for a story on that. I used to use the topical flea and tick pesticides on him. And he would run for me every time he saw me get the vial out. Every time I'd say, this is for your own good. As soon as he could get outside, he would roll in the dirt, roll in the grass, while trying to get that stuff off of him. And when I know what it is now, there's no way I would ever have used that on him. I hear people tell me all the time, oh, well, my in my area, it's endemic for Lyme disease or mosquitoes or whatever it might be. Uh, there's all kinds of things. But did you realize that ants, caterpillars, aphids, all those things have a, a, a balance in nature? And when we support that, I let the ants hang out because they eat the aphids and they support the caterpillars so they can become butterflies. There's a whole lot of things that we need to learn about that that I really don't have time to go into today. I do have um, a, a free ebook on um, pest-free dogs. And so when you sign up for my newsletter or on my website, you can get that book. I had a commentator say to me one time about fleas, well, you have coyotes in your area because I live in the high desert in New Mexico. And, and I said, yeah, but let me ask you this question. If you, if you have them, are you using pesticides in your yards? Are you using chemical fertilizers? Are you using all of that kind of stuff? And I got no answer. And I don't use any of that stuff in my yard. And so there's a balance. There's a natural balance. So the yard's healthy. It has a good immune system. And I do the same with my dogs, the exact same. I have a great quote by this musician. I've used this guy's quote so many times. And the name of his article is uh, Understanding the True Meaning of Disease by Mike Donkers. And he says, pathogens and microorganisms are part of life. They are the original life forms and they fulfill a very complex function. All forms of cellular life on earth share genetic links. Humans are genetically linked to so-called pathogens or microorganisms. Listen to this real carefully. We actually consist of bacteria, fungi, viruses, parasites, and other microorganisms. And I might add, there's more of those than there are cells in our bodies, in us. So they form part of our system. Plants and animals are also made up of these. Antoine Beauchamp discovered that if he stopped fighting these microorganisms and instead improve what he called the milieu, the environment of the cells, or the so-called pathogens then did not disappear, they actually aided in repairing the cells. By not focusing on the disease, but on healing instead, Beauchamp witnessed the pathogens doing the same. When he concentrated on disease, however, and literally tried to combat it, fight it, war it, right? The pathogens proved themselves to be the worst enemy. And he showed that microorganisms are the bridge between life and death and every stage in between. So here are the solutions, you guys. The eight laws of health that I mentioned, and they seem too simple. Like I said, those simple solutions, that's what we follow for ours. Our dogs get all of those. They're real nutrition, exercise daily, pure water, sunshine, fresh air rest without all the electrical interferences that are all around us all the time and they're affecting us too. We use things in our home to offset that. Then we use whole food supplements when needed, you know, probiotics and enzymes if needed. They get most of that from their food. We don't use any of those kind of toxic products in our yards or homes or on us. Everything I use on me is all natural organic stuff. We detox on a regular basis and then I use essential oils. And people think that's scary for dogs. I know a lot scarier things than that for dogs if, I'm, if you're using the right, the right um, good ones. Got to qualify those two. You got to qualify everything, you guys. So in closing, and I'm just 
I cut, I, there's not enough time to share this in depth, but um, there are resources on my website. Here is in closing, all right? Albert Einstein said, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. Clients are afraid, I have found, to be the responsible one that holds the knowledge that they have surrendered to perceived authorities, so they rest on their laurels, to the suffering and detriment of their pets. See, that's what changed me. I could not watch Shadrach suffer anymore. I could not watch them go through this anymore. And even everyone subsequent sense, subsequent dog sense, stretches me and pushes me to go further because I cannot abide that. It's my responsibility. I chose to bring them into my life and into my home, right? Okay. So this happens all the time. So connecting the dots, got to connect all these dots is it's simple, but hard for a lot of people. You know, in the movie, the matrix Morpheus said, you have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. Many of them are so inured, so hopelessly dependent upon the system that they will fight to protect it. Let's fight instead to protect our pet's health and our own wellness as well. Okay? So how did I start connecting the dots? Well, God used dogs to get my attention. I finally paid attention, starting with Bridge, my golden retriever, who had so many issues. And ultimately, he died of cancer. Yeah. I didn't really totally listen till he was he had passed. But when I was finally ready to pay attention because of Shadrach, I was really ready to do something. And that's when I just went gangbusters with it. Remember, Albert Einstein has said the definition of, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. We got to change that, yo. Maybe we need to consider doing things the way God laid out for us in his laws of health and in nature. Because, like I said earlier, ignorance nowadays is a choice in a form of knowledge, a.k.a. cognitive dissonance. Eckhart Tolle has said that awareness is the greatest agent for change. And I believe that if you guys are listening to this, that's what you want to do and you want to know. So just do it. <laughs> Thank you for um, allowing me the opportunity to be here and that I had to go so fast that I couldn't give you guys all the hardcore nitty gritty stuff. but. You can find some stuff on my website. <laughs> Dr. Kim, I was uh, impressed with how much you covered in that uh, in that time frame. Um, and it's clear you are an expert in the, in the subject, um, uh, a lot of subjects, really. Um, we appreciate you being on the show. And um, do you have a, a closing message that you'd like to share with our viewers who are maybe struggling pet businesses right now? Uh, after all, that's what uh, the <laughs> raiser is all about. I just really want, I, I think my passion is that people would think, think through and become involved, become an active participant in the health and well being of your pet. Don't surrender it. Don't just say, okay, my vet said. And for the veterinarians who are on here, that is no, you know, that's no diss on them. But I think, you know, because I, I have that same discussion when I go to a vet, I, I'm going to, I'm going to advocate for my pet because I, they're the ones, I, they live with me, they're mine. So I'm the responsible one. So are you, because you chose to bring them into your life. That's what I want them to go away with. Think. Well, that's amazing. And again, I appreciate you uh, actually leading into what our next uh, segment is, and um, uh, you know, being a responsible pet parent. Um, awesome. And, and the next topic is actually about uh, service animals and therapy animals, and we have a couple of special guests that are coming on and joining us right now. Um, we have the, the vice president of Missouri Patriot Paws uh, with us, and we also have uh, Kelly and Bandit. Bandit is the first, uh, I believe, USO therapy dog. Bandit's also up for an award, uh, the American Humane Awards. Um, and Kelly's going to tell us all about how you can help Bandit um, <laughs> win this award. But uh, incredible animals and, and, and incredible advice from you as well, Dr. Kim. That's Dr. Kim uh, with uh, Aspen Bloom. Um, <clears throat> we thank you again for being on the show. Aspen Bloom Pet Care. It's Dr. Kim Bloomer. Um, where can, real quick, where can they find more information about you uh, after this? Go to aspenbloompetcare.com and they can find the podcast linked on there and, um, and in the blog where I put, I'm, I'm an educator. So, <laughs> and, and, and same thing with the classes, everything are linked right there. 
And there's free stuff there too for you guys. Go get educated and advocate for your pet. Thank you so much for being on Thank the show. You. I wish you the best. Wish uh, you the best. Hopefully we can cover more uh, at a later time because you have a wealth of knowledge. So uh, again, thank you so much. Thank you so much.